A massive cow lift organized by businessman Muataz El Hayat came quickly in response to the embargo. Within 18 months, thousands of dairy cows were brought into Qatar by air and by sea. When the blockade happened in 2017, we took that decision to ship the 4,000 cows from the United States directly, and we built the phase one of our project to provide the country the milk needed here. Now this farm produces 500 tons of milk and cheese per month, and it's even begun exporting to Oman, one of the two Gulf states that did not join the embargo. The embargo is also transforming Qatar's landscape. More of this desert land is now being used for agriculture. And we are planning to increase the production to four to five million square meter in the coming two, three years. This is the food security for the food and vegetable. And this is our aim, and this is our intention to do that. I think if we get the full support Within three, four years, we can have almost 80% of our requirement to be produced locally, especially in the vegetable. A harsh climate, sandy soil, and little water mean reaching this goal has to happen in hydroponic greenhouses. We uh, produce four, four main crops, uh, zucchini, tomato, eggplant, and, uh, and uh, tomato, beside mushroom, of course. They're all organic. With the cows and cutting edge farming, the embargo has brought more economic self-reliance. Its growing stock exchange now lists more companies that produce for the local market. The Baladna Group recently started trading publicly, and demand for its shares exceeded supply on opening day. For some, Qatari self-sufficiency means security and a sense of relief. It's better to feel independent when you have uh, your own product at your country and you feel more safe and you don't need others. And so an embargo that was meant to weaken Qatar appears to be having an opposite effect. Jacob Warchafter for VOA News, Doha.